Hello and welcome to Spindle TV. My name is Lanny Shaughnessy. I'm going to be your host this evening. And uh, how are you all doing? Uh, Roger will talk about uh, that song lyric sign as we get into class, get started on it. But uh, hope everybody's doing well. Hope you're having a good week so far. And uh, getting ready for the end of the month right around the corner. August is coming soon. Year's flying by. Oh my, oh my. Well, last week's class got a lot of positive comments, and um, because of that, I thought we would kind of continue the theme and uh, design some more signs and, you know, look at some different uh, elements of, uh, you know, creating signs and layout and stuff uh, like we did last week um, and uh, see how it goes. Um, if you have any questions... Be sure to uh, throw those up in the chat. I'm happy to answer them. Throw a couple of question marks in the in front of the question so I know it's a question for me uh, and um, not just part of the conversation y'all are having. And we'll go through and answer some of those as well. But uh, um, it's good to see uh, you all here tonight. And let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it, right? So let's get started. All right, so let's see here. I am on camera three. There we go. And let's get me down here. Okay. Looking good. All right. Now, before we get started, uh, Roger Brown jumped in early uh, in the chat, and uh, he said uh, he was wondering about doing a song lyric sign. You know, I see them with the title in uh, big print and then the lyrics behind it, almost like a text on text. Uh, thoughts on doing something like that. Now, Roger, uh, let me know if uh, this sample that I pull up is something like you're talking about. Um Let's see if we can maximize this out and bear with me a second. Uh, so there example. All right, let me pull that up a little bit different way. Didn't realize I had all those screens open. Okay. Uh, downloads. Song lyric sample. And let's see if I can pull into it this way. All right. So, uh, Roger, let me know if uh, this is kind of the um what you're referencing when you say the song lyric sign um where it would have the song lyrics in the background and either the title or in this case it has you know a husband and wife's name and date in the front foreground um there is uh you know something like that or um there is on another example, let's see here if I can find it again. You would have something like this to where uh, the front text is actually carved out of, out of a completely separate board. Uh, the lyrics are carved in a backer board and then it's overlaid. So that's, a, that's an option as well too, kind of what you see over here in the right of the screen in this sample so that's kind of an option as well um and everything but uh let me know if the one on the screen is the one that you're kind of it, 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 and you're kind of commenting about let me know if that's the um the sample And let's get back here. Okay. 
how's everybody doing uh, today thanks for popping in all right now the as we get in here I want to just kind of uh, play around with a couple of things and uh, we'll um, we'll get started all right so let's get started on uh, the first one we're gonna do kind of almost like a uh, Sun uh, coming up over a bridge kind of a horizon uh, Sun rising over the horizon of a bridge and um, we're gonna see how we can quickly and easily draw something like that up uh, so for this we're gonna start off with a rectangle and I'll go ahead and get that rectangle centered there we're gonna take and draw some smaller rectangles as well oops uh, let's see here we'll go something about like that and I'm gonna use the array tool and the offset and layout tools down here at the left I'm gonna use the array copy tool and I'm going to uh, just make an array of these um, little rectangles that I have selected there let's see if I can uh, just throw in an array there and I just went with what I had in my screen now I'm going to delete what I don't want okay all right let's select these guys here and let's align them in the center I'm going to take a, another rectangle and a small narrow rectangle and I'm going to run it across the top of these parts and I want to go kind of even with that one on this end drag this over even with this on this end that looks good to me all right now in here I'm going to select all of these inner rectangles and I'm going to weld them together so I'm going to use the weld tool uh, to weld those together to create kind of almost like a comb if you will all right and now we're going to go ahead and throw all of this i'm going to select all of this and we're going to throw it in our distort tool so i'm going to use the distort tool and i'm going to throw it inside of a bounding box and click apply and on this top line i'm going to turn it into an arc bring that arc down a bit this bottom line i'm going to turn into an arc Bring that up a bit. Now, I'm going to back up. Uh, there's one thing I want to do before I do the arcs. So I'm going to back up two steps uh, before I get to the weld. Let's close this tool for a minute. I want to remove some of these rectangles. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to remove the sixth one. Delete one two three four five get rid of the sixth one one two three four five get rid of the sixth one three four five six come over here one two three four five six one two three four five six and let's go ahead and get rid of these two Let's bring this rectangle to the end here. And let's shorten this up a bit. All right, let's go ahead now and weld these parts back together. Oops. Weld. There we go. I want it to kind of look like uh, individual railings. So I wanted to get rid of, you know, one every six. And now I'll throw it in the distort tool. 
uh, throw it inside of a bounding box and take this top line of our bounding box and turn it to an arc. And of course, I don't want the arc that dramatic. Um, let's All right, one more time. Arc. There we go. Had to get the top of my bridge in that in that arc as well. The lower line, we're going to turn that into an arc. It wants to pull down. Let's pull it up a little bit. There we go. Kind of create that illusion of a bridge. Now let's create something that looks a little bit like a hillside or something that that bridge is crawling over. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but we're going to take small line here a rectangle not line rectangle uh, let's go into node editing mode and let's turn this into an arc pull that down arc pull that up I want the arc to somewhat follow that bridge pattern. And um, let's pull this out. Kind of give it a little bit of a curve. We'll fix that in just a second. Over here, let's do the same thing. I want to pull this down a little bit. And I'm pulling this middle line out. And I'm just kind of turning it into a Bezier curve just to kind of give it somewhat of a curve in here. Let's go over and fix this one. I want to pull this kind of into a curve. Do the same thing here a bit. Just kind of smoothing that out. Um, I'll do the same thing here. Nothing too crazy. All right. It's not the best looking ground in the world, but it will do. All right. Now, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and add the sun in here. So I'm going to use a star tool uh i'll go 25 points on the star and uh let's kind of throw that in there that's going to be my son's rays of course we don't want to go that big let's size that down to a realistic size all right now i want to throw a circle in the center of this and I want to extend it out past my rays here. Okay. And then I'm going to take another circle and come in probably right about there. And now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to do some trimming. So on my scissors and everything, on my trimming here, I want to trim away kind of these inner triangles. Now I'm only going halfway. The bottom half of this circular sun, if you will, is not going to be shown. So I only need to kind of get rid of up to, I'll just go to there. And then between each one of these rays, I want to trim this line that was created to separate those, basically those points to kind of create some individual rays. And almost there. Okay. Now I'm going to take a line and I'm going to pick where the rays are starting to kind of point upward somewhere in the middle here I want to just draw a line straight across and 
and I'm going to use my scissors again and trim away. what I don't need. All right. All right, let's get rid of this, this, and this. Now I'm gonna bring this down and on this outer boundary here, this outer boundary, um, I want to do an offset of it, and I'm gonna use it just like we did last week. I'm using the offset to create a boundary for trimming. So I just wanna offset outward, and I'm gonna go just about a 16th of an inch just to create this boundary here. So that way when I bring this sun kind of down to here I have that arc right there that's what I actually want okay I want that arc there uh, instead of the straight line that I used earlier to trim and everything so I'm gonna take my scissors and trim this away this straight line away and that away and that should get rid of my offset all the way around and just delete that and now I have a bit of a curve that kind of matches this curve here okay so I can kind of uh, come in and I'm just gonna bring that down just a little bit just to give the illusion of that Sun just peeking over that bridge and if I wanted to I could come in here and um, you know every other ray uh, if I wanted to, I could kind of, uh, not, let's not do it that way. Let's go into node editing mode and pull that straight down. If I wanted to, I could take every other ray and shorten it up. Uh, if I wanted to give it that kind of look of the, the you know, on the sun, uh, where it has the long rays and the short rays and stuff. Uh, let's see what that looks like, and then we'll see if I want to go back to all long rays. All right, let's take a look at that. Um, not a fan, really. Not a fan, so I'm gonna go back to all long rays. There we go. And you know, if I were to uh, let's throw some text in there just to kind of give a little bit of a an example. Um, I'll just throw in uh, the word. Um, I'll just throw in the word welcome, just as an example. Uh, welcome. All right, let's get things lined up, centered up, and sized up. So I'm going to take my bridge and sunset over here, or sunrise, if you will, and I'm going to group that together as one item so I can kind of move it independently and size it and things like that. Um, and want to kind of size this down a bit. And then I want to take everything and center it on the board so it looks a little bit more uniform. And then I'll bring it up a little bit. Now, I want to break this text up in uh, in, in just a moment so I can make the E and the W a little bit bigger, but I want to distort this text first because I'd like the E L C O M to follow the arch of the bridge to give just, just to kind of break up the monotony of the straight text and things. I want to kind of have it follow. So I'm going to first take the text here and I'm going to distort it. 
sort of like I did that rectangle, that bridge. And when I distort it over here on the E, right about here, uh, I'm going to add a point. And right about at the M, right here, I'm going to add a point. And then in between here, I'm going to turn that into an arc and pull that down uh, so it kind of flows. And then I'm going to take my um, bridge and everything here and kind of move it up. And I'm going to size it up a little bit. All right. And then I'm going to take my text here. I've got it kind of, I've got that. Let me see if I can get that uh, to follow a little bit more. Let's see if I can. Edit that envelope. See if I can get that to come up just a little bit more. There we go. And now I want to break this text. This text is still in that envelope that I was just distorting. I want to get it out of there now so I can work with the W and the E. So I'm going to uh, right click or close this tool first. I'm going to right click on the text and I'm going to convert it to curves. That means I'm going to just turn it into a vector and break it out of that distortion box. So now that I can work with the letters independently. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to, um, let me grab a guideline here to help me. I'd like to bring the W up to right about here. And let me bring that guideline down to the top of it because I want the E to match. And then I could come in and add some additional text or what have you. And all I'm doing is I'm basically, I'm kind of winging this right now just to show you that, you know, the way we can just kind of just create, you know, and, and do things. Um, let's do a V carving on this. So let's go uh, V carve toolpath. Uh, I'm going to go with a flat depth because of this area here in the large text, eighth of an inch flat depth with an eighth inch end mill. Uh, I'm going to calculate that toolpath. I'm using a 60 degree V bit for the V car part of it. And let's reset. And let's, I'll go with kind of a maroon color, but let's preview that visible toolpath. So we can kind of just play around and it doesn't have to be so cookie cutter all the time. Just trying to open your thinking a little bit as far as the way you can add elements um, or create your own or something. I probably on the bridge, uh, I probably on the edges should have brought the down some. So uh, up here, so it wasn't so squared off, I should go I should ungroup this. Let's see here. Ungroup this. And in here, let's see. In my distort. I want to bring oops hold on hold on all right I'm going to bring this down. Oh, 
I got two rays inside of that. Uh, um, I've got two rays inside of that. Uh, that distortion box. Let me uh, let me back up. Let me get those out of there. They don't belong in there. Uh, when I was selecting the box for distorting or the bridge, I had these two rays selected. Let's turn those off. I don't want those in there. Let's do that one more time. Uh, we're going to go make sure everything is selected. All right. Let's bring this down here, bring that down there, and oh, pull that back up to there. And let's get that sun. back here and just give it a little bit of uh, some kind of perspective or, or, or distortion or something so it uh, is not so straight across and we could uh, come in here and recalculate that reset the preview preview the visible toolpath and then kind of go something along those lines like that right so distortion the distort tool is a tool that you don't really use that much but try it sometimes really good stuff uh, one of my favorite uh, uses for the distortion tool uh, let's move on to a second design good evening crystal how are you and roger i'll get to your question in just a second um, let's get rid of that and let's go with some text. Let's go B A K E R Y Bakery. Right, Bakery, Bakery. Uh, let's size that up. Let me make my board a little bit bigger. Uh, go in here, get off this 12 by 12 for a minute. I'm going to go 22 by 9 and a quarter. Wonderful. All right, let's get this on the board. Align to the center. Let's stretch I'm gonna hold down the shift key stretch this out uh, stretch the top out there we go uh, let's go back into our text box um, um, let's see here Do, do, do. Let's get off that. Let's go. Uh, made with love. In the find a font that is somewhat appealing. Let's weld that font together. Okay. All right. Let's get that centered aligned to the center. Now on bakery, I want to take 
and I want to pull it down a little bit taller and I want to distort it again so I'm going to throw it in the distort box uh, let's go into distort bounding box this time at the bottom here I'm going to turn that bottom into an arc and I'm going to arc it up keeping this top straight across I want to arc this up don't want to go too much right I don't want it looking distorted and all so a nice subtle arc there and then let's bring in an image a graphic image I'm going to bring in two uh, to see which one I want uh, which one I like better which graphic I like better but uh, we're going to bring in some rolling pins here so let's open this one up we'll trace that and let's open up this other one all right let's start off and let's trace these guys and then we'll do some rotating and fixing and all let's start off with these two over here let's zoom into them and in the trace bitmap tool looks like the bird with his tail being traced over here the first icon in the last row I want to turn my fading off I'm going to turn my threshold up to uh, in this case 75 and I'm going to just draw a box around this particular rolling pin here. Um, this is uh, the only one that I want to trace. So I'm gonna draw a box around that. And I'm going to click Preview, Apply and Close. We'll get rid of that. Size this up. And set it aside for a minute. Now let's do this one. We'll see if I like this one better. Uh, we'll go in, same thing, turn the bitmap fading off. Uh, I'm gonna slide this up to 75. That's kind of my maximum of my threshold. I work between 50 and 75, and 75 is the maximum of that threshold, so that's where I kind of tend to go to. Uh, and preview that good we'll get rid of this all right now on this one I am gonna size it up but I'm gonna rotate it now when I rotate it, I want to pivot it so I'm gonna single click on the center box here and that's going to show me my pivot point. And then I'm going to drag that over to here. And then I'm going to pivot this up because I want to kind of straighten it out. Somewhat. Okay. And on this one, I'm just going to rotate it using the number zero key on the keyboard uh, to rotate it sideways. All right. Now... <clears throat> Let's throw that there. So either one of these I can use. Let's get rid of this pixel here. Ungroup. And I'm deleting this pixel there because it's the square pixel. It's trash. And I've got two over here, three over here. Get rid of those. All right. So I'm either going to use this one or this one. We'll see which one I like better when we do the V-carve. But uh, let's go ahead and create our toolpath uh, for the first one. Uh, on this one, we're going to select everything. And I am pretty much wanting this to go to a straight V depth. So I'm going to go, I'll, I'll limit it to a quarter of an inch because the word bakery is big um, I'll do a flat depth at a quarter and calculate that I probably want to actually switch it up and use a 90 and a 120 degree V bit I'll find out here in two seconds um, let's preview this
Okay, let's change the color to black. Okay. So I'm actually not mad at it. Uh, it's actually not too bad. All right, so that's my first example with that rolling pin. Kind of like the little detail right here in the rolling pin and stuff. Let's look at the second one. I'm going to move this to a new layer. And I'm just going to turn that layer off for a moment so I can move this up into place. Uh, this one's got to be sized a little bit. And let me let me rotate it one more time. All right, let's see if I can bring this up. All right, let's do a V-car toolpath on this one. I think I'm going to like the other one better, but we'll find out. Uh, same parameters and everything. We'll go ahead and just calculate this. Reset the preview and preview the visible toolpath. Kind of a toss up, right? First one or the second one. Um, Not quite sure. They both don't look bad at all. Uh, so either way, but distorting that text, that bakery, curving the bottom of it and everything uh, just gives the sign a little bit of a different element. Uh, it gives it a little bit of character and everything. It's not, again, just not so cookie cutter. So the distort tool is a great little tool. Now let's actually get into uh, what Roger was asking. He says, um, the ones I've seen the song title, uh, the ones I sing ha seen have the song title, then have some of the words along with the notes, but other styles uh, would work, right? So if I look at song lyric signs online, okay, uh, and, and things, uh, there are quite a variety of uh, different types of uh, song lyric signs where um, you have the song notes. Again, that has someone's name there. Uh, so I'm seeing a lot of them with people's names, but uh, the, uh, let's see. I mean, this one here, A Thousand Years, that's the song title, but uh, I'm not quite sure what uh, which particular style you're talking about, but let's assume that it's something along the lines of this, where you have the song lyrics in the background and then the title going across the front of it, right? I mean, it's all going to be the same concept. Yeah, the first one, right, Crystal? Yeah, exactly. The first one. Um, it's all going to be kind of the same exact kind of concept the way it's the way it's done Roger so uh, You can take the example and just run with it, right? So um, Let's get this out of the way here and um, Let's see what I can do here All right, let's go in and uh, we'll create a new layer. I'm just creating on the same board and everything and all that stuff. So uh, we're at a new layer here and we'll turn off everything else for right now. All right, so let's assume, um, Roger, for uh, 
just for information's sake or what have you. I'm gonna go with a little bit wider board. I'm gonna go with a, uh, a 12 inch, one by 12 board, so 11 and a quarter. 22 I'll stick with, that's fine. All right, now I'm gonna open up the text box and on the text, I wanna go with a basic uh, text. I'm gonna probably go monotype Corsiva on this one. Um, on the background text, which is gonna be the song lyrics, okay? And um, this one I actually need to go, I need to change my board around uh, in a different format. But let's go, um, Okay, uh, let's change up the board size for a second here. Let's flip things around. Uh, let's go 11 and a quarter along the X and 22 along the Y. I could rewrite the lyrics so everything is long and vertical, but uh, it's just gonna be uh, uh, just as easy for me to do it this way. I don't think I need to go 22 inches long. Um, let me see here. Okay, I want this to, I don't want this to be staggered. I mean, I, yeah, I could probably leave it like that. Here, hold on a second. Um, centered on the board, that's fine. We'll work with this as it is. Lay it out however you want, right? So uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's add some text in here. All right, let's change up the font. Let's go, let's go. Um, all right, let's size this up so I can see what I'm doing here. This is where I would want a little bit of a wider board, but again, this is just an example for you, Roger. Okay. All righty, Aphrodite. Now, let me get this centered. Okay, let's assume for the most part that this is our song, our song title, what have you. Well, just like we did with the eagle and the shield and everything last week and all, we need to give the illusion, if you will, that one thing is in front of another. And in this case, Amazing Grace is going to be in front of the song lyrics. So any part of the song lyrics that the letters of Amazing Grace, the song title that are covering, they will not be seen, right? They're, they're behind Amazing Grace. So you wouldn't see them visually, right? That, that's the illusion. So 
Amazing Grace is going to be our boundary, okay? Uh, and we need to clear everything inside the boundary away so that it's standing in front. Um, and so in this case, I'm gonna do a little bit of an offset because I'm not gonna make just the exact words the boundary. I want a little bit of a clearance uh, from that. So Amazing Grace is going to get offset outward, uh, and it could be however much you want. In this case, I'm just going to go a sixteenth of an inch. Okay. And then that offset is going to be the boundary. So let me do this. I'm going to do that again, but this time I want to check off the box that says Select New. So that way my offset is selected and I don't have to go there and try to reselect it. So offset that again, continue. Okay, now on here, uh, that is going to, that, that newly selected vector, that's gonna be my boundary. So I'm gonna group it together, okay? So that the software is treating it like one item and that's my boundary. So what I want to trim is selected first. What I want to trim to my boundary is selected last. So I want to select my text first. Okay. And then I want to select the boundary last. Now, because the text of the song lyrics is a font, it may require us to turn it to a vector before we do any trimming. Let's find out. So if I come into my trim tool and clear to the inside boundary, clear inside the boundary, the amazing grace is the boundary, that offset. So if I clear that, okay, nothing uh, is warning me or uh, popping up saying, you can't do this and all that. What did happen is the text, it auto, by function, it automatically converted the font of the song lyrics into vectors and then it trimmed them. Okay? Which is fine. Good. Who cares? That's great. That's what we want. Um, and just make sure before you do that that you got the correct uh, font that you want to use, right? I'm using monotype cursiva. I like it for smaller fonts like that. It looks good and, uh, and all that. Now my boundary that I used around amazing grace, I don't want that. I'm going to delete it or throw it on another layer if I need to use it again or something. In this case, I'm just going to delete it. And so now we have that amazing grace is standing in front of the song lyrics. Uh, and we have that illusion that that's what's occurring. So if we were to uh, V-carve this, V-carve toolpath, um, I'm not going to do a flat depth on this one. But I am going to use, instead of a 60, I'll use a 90 degree V-bit. Very rarely do I use a 90 degree V-bit, but in this case, I'm going to. Uh, don't need a flat area clearance tool and let's calculate that. Now on this particular font, the monotype Corsova, all the G's most of the G's have a little loop in it. And that creates the little warning that pops up about lines that are overlapping and things like that. And right now I don't wanna go through and clean up all the little G's on that font and everything. Um, I'll, we'll zoom into a couple and I'll show you what I'm referring to. Um, but let's preview this cut. All right, let's turn the color off just so you can see what's happening here, right? So the Amazing Grace is getting cut on top of the uh, larger text and whatever the letters of Amazing Grace are covering, 
whatever it's covering of the, the smaller text in the background, that's hidden, right? It's behind it, right? It's that illusion. So um, that would be uh, how we do that. If we, you know, if you were painting the sign, it would look something like that. Um, and that's all there is to it, Roger. Okay. So uh, that's all there is to it, right? Your song title, the text that's going to be in the front, right? That's covering the, the lyrics in the back. That's your boundary. Offset that boundary however much you want. Uh, basically, the offset amount is going to be based on how far or how much space I want between the letters of Amazing Grace and the letters of the song lyrics. You know, how much clearing I want. And in this case, I went a sixteenth of an inch, right? And, uh, you know, that's good. I don't want to go too crazy. I don't want to be too tight. I want to give myself a little bit of room so the Amazing Grace really stands out. And uh, in all, uh, so um, in this case, it was an offset of a sixteenth of an inch. And then that offset is grouped together, so it's treated like one object. Your back text is selected first. That offset is selected last. You're going to trim, clearing inside that boundary. And it's rinse and repeat. The same steps every single time for every single song sign that you're trying to do. Right? Okay. Um, yeah, Paul, uh, metric is great for uh, tracing images and, and, and converting them to curves. Absolutely. Um, it is, uh, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, but, uh, so Roger, hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight and on how you would do that. And, uh, that would be, um, that would be the process. That's how I would approach it anyway. I don't know of any other way to approach it, but there could be, I mean, there's more than one way to you know, uh, tackle things. And, um, but that's how I would do it. Okay. So let's now, let's take it. Uh, we, we, we just showed how to do boundaries and all with the text and everything. Let's take it a little bit to a little bit different step. Um, I'll just create a new layer here and turn that one off for a minute. All right. For this one, I'm going to go back to a uh, 12 by 12. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another sheet. That'll make it easy on us. Uh, and that way I'm just kind of working in one screen. We'll go 12 by 12 here. All right. Now, on this one, it's the last kind of example of that trimming to boundaries and stuff. Uh, and just a quick and dirty sample. Uh, and then, um, and then we're going to move on to bigger and better things. We're going to see if we can lay out a nice, uh, cool sign. We might do something with that bakery rolling pin. Who knows? I've got some graphics we're going to bring in a trace, but let's really quickly and dirty, uh, kind of, uh, go through this one more time just to show you. Uh, let's start off. I'm going to start off with a rectangle and this rectangle is going to go the full length of the board here and It's going to be a quarter of an inch wide. So 0.25 Beautiful. I am going to center that onto the material Wonderful and then I'm going to hit control C for copy and control V for paste to make a duplicate of that and then I'm going to hit the number nine key on the keyboard to rotate that twice. So it's 90 degrees. Okay. Easy enough. I'm going to take and at the center of my board, I'm going to draw a circle right about here. And then I'm going to do that again. I'm going to come out a little bit further. And on this circle, I'm going to offset it outward a quarter of an inch. Wonderful. I am going to uh, come in and type in some text. I'm going to use a 
All right, now I wrote this as a text block, uh, but I want it to be two individual lines of text, so I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna break it into lines. This way I can take my top text here, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna center it left to right, and this one here, I'm gonna lower this down, I want to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to center it left to right. Make sure everything is centered. Wonderful. Okay. Now, my text is going to be in front of this optical, the, the, this optic, basically, that I made, this kind of reticle, if you will. The text is going to be in front of it, right? So my, uh, once again, my text is going to be my boundary because it's going to be the front. Now, uh, first thing before I do any offsets or any clearing or any of that, I want to kind of uh, clean this up and I want to take my scissors and I want to combine the outer circle here with the reticle. So I want to basically get rid of all the, where all the lines kind of cross over on the outside here. up at the top as well. And at the bottom. Okay. All right, now, here, I'm gonna have the lines that come in. Uh, these lines here, the vertical lines, and the horizontal, or the vertical line, sorry, and the horizontal line, I want those V carved in up to this center circle. Then I want them opposite. I want them raised uh, just to kind of give a different uh, uh, level to this optic. So I'm going to take this inner circle and I'm going to offset it in two directions. So I'm going to offset it in both directions. And I'm just going to go a sixteenth of an inch. Too many decimals. To create this double line here, because what I want to do is, I'm using this as a boundary, if you will. Uh, I want to take my scissors and I want to trim away this line, this, this, and this line, and basically it cuts this line from the inner line here, right? And then here, I want to select this, this, and these two lines. And basically, I'm just using those two circles to create my divide, if you will, right? Just to create my divide from that center circle. So same thing up here, uh, trimming this, this, and the outside line just to create, you know, close that off. And then same thing here, this, this, and that outside line. And again, I'm just creating that divide with my middle circle, my middle line that I offset. Uh, being in the middle of those two. So let's finish cleaning this up and I'm repeating this all the way around. All right, now that my optic is done, when I'm carving, when the V-bit's gonna carve between these lines, but when it gets in here, because of this single line border around here, it's gonna be carving all of these away, leaving these lines raised. It'll be opposite. Now that everything is done, I'm going to select my design, except for the text, turn that off. And I'm going to group it together as one item. I want the software thinking of it as one item. Now I need to use my text as to create my trimming boundaries because the text is going to be in front. So everything the text is covering is going to be hidden, just like the amazing grace. So I want to offset my text. I'm going to go just this again, not very much, a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm going to go outward. Okay, just to create that boundary. 
I'm going to group that together. I'm hitting the letter G on the keyboard to group that together so it's treated like one item. And once again, always select what you want to trim first. Hold that shift key down, select the boundary you want to trim to last. And then I want to use my trim tool and clear inside that boundary. That'll get rid of that. And then I can delete that offset boundary. I don't need it. I could put it on another layer if I wanted, if I was worried that I needed to go back and fix some things. In this case, I don't. So I'm just going to delete it. it. It served its purpose. I no longer need it. And now I have my text where it looks like it's in front. And if I were to V carve this, I'll put a flat depth on this one of an eighth of an inch. And I'll use the I will use the 90 degree V bit is fine for this. Preview that tool path. And let's add some color for uh, the uh, whatever color. What, what color can y'all see best? Uh, we'll go black and everything. So that center optic, that black, and then the raised lines are raised. As it comes out beyond that center focal point, uh, everything is opposite where it's carved in and stuff, right? Same principle all the way around from what we did with Amazing Grace to something like this to what we did with the Eagle and Shield last week or the week before last uh, in last class. It's all the same principles, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, right? So once you have that, you've got it. Then you can start just kind of throwing things on top of each other. And if there's more than one thing on top of another, you just, what what's, what's out front, what's behind it, what's behind that, that kind of thing. Um, okay, let's get into some real sign making. Just wanted to show that last example. And um, let's go into All right, we're going to go I'm going to go 24 inches by 11 and a quarter, 1 by 12, 24 inches long. It's a good size decent sign, right? And uh, it's a good size decent sign. And uh, uh, we'll stick with that. I'm touching off on the material surface starting in the bottom left corner and First thing I want to do is I have some elements I want to use, some little flourishes and things like that. So uh, I'm going to go into the import a bitmap image. I'm going to zoom into that, those items, these little one lines. I could have probably drew them myself, right? Uh, but uh, just want to be able to use those elements and stuff. We're going to trace, turn the fading off. I'm going to go 75 and preview, apply and close. And now normally I would just turn off the bitmap layer. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to delete the bitmap and all. And um, the let's ungroup these guys. Now, I've got some, I'm going to make them larger so I can actually see them. And then I'll size them as I need them or whatever. But uh, I'm going to pull them up here and I will kind of uh, play around with and grab what I want when I want it. All right, so let's, um, we will, let's, let's go with the uh, bakery sign. 
right? And I want to do something a little bit fun with the text uh, and all too. So you guys and girls ready? Here we go. Uh, I'm going to use the word bakery. It's going to be my main word. And of course, let's do it all in capital letters. I'm going to make this for the kitchen. Uh, and I'm going to go full on tall text. I'm going to go um, four inches tall, centered on the board. Wonderful. Looks good. All right. That looks great. Now, <clears throat> the uh, what I would like to do is I'd like to take this flourish. here and this one here I'd like to stretch and size that up so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale it up something like this and then I'm gonna stretch it And by design, this side is longer than this side. That's that's by design. Uh, I'm going to size this up. Not as big. It's going to be smaller. And stretch that out. Make sure that that is centered left to right. Make sure that this is centered left to right. Okay. And... Good old. That'll be good there. Um, I want to add, I'd like to add uh, some foliage. Let me see if I can find, I might have to draw it out and that's not a big deal if I have to draw it out, but let me see if I can uh, Let me see if I can find, I'll pull it over onto the main screen as soon as I find it. Yeah. All right, let me import this image in. Import. Do, 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 do. Zoom into it, trace tool, turn the fading off. I'm gonna pull this up to 75. That's kind of, again, that's just my number. Actually, on this one, I'm gonna go, I want a little bit more of that white in the leaves, so I'm gonna go 50 on that one. Uh, preview, apply and close. And I actually only want this one. Let's ungroup it. Let's get rid of that image. I actually only want this one. I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to throw one here. And I'm going to mirror it on the other side. Flip about job center, create a mirrored copy. There we go. And da -da 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 -da, I wish I would have left myself a little bit of room on the front and back here. Let me see. Let me see. Um. 
on the word bakery, I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to shrink it up just a little bit. Hold down that shift key. I want to pull it in just a little. That's good. Which means I'm going to pull this one in just a little. Hold that shift key to keep everything even. That means I'm going to grab this one. Not going to change this one a whole lot, just a little bit. There we go. All right, now I want to see. I don't know if it'll look good. I think just those two down there, but let's look at the mirror tool and let's see if we flip it vertically and horizontally. Not bad. We'll leave it. All right, now what I'd like to put here, okay, what I'd like to put here is um, uh, kind of like a little arrow, but not really. Um, think of like a necktie. Let's see here. Let's go, I'll draw the shape on this side, then I'll mirror it to the other. So we're going to go with a circle. I'm going to go with a rectangle. With square corners. All right. So here we go. Node editing going to we're going to create this shape here. Node editing is great uh, for doing things, you know, making new shapes out of shapes. All right, here we go. We're going to insert a point right here in the middle. Insert point there. And then somewhere back, um, let's insert a point here. I want to pull this out kind of like a arrow, if you will. I'm going to turn this into a Bezier curve. No, no, undo that. An arc. I want to turn it into an arc. And I want a, a subtle little curve there. I'm actually going, so I get it perfect, I'm going to cut the vector right down the middle, cut it here. Over here, I'm going to delete this point. Okay. And I want this to be a busy A curve. I want this to come up a little bit. And I want it to, cur oh, let's not do that. Only select one of the nodes. I want to curve it so it comes into here. And I'm going to cut the vector there. And I'm going to delete this lower half so that I can take this and mirror it. I want to flip it to the bottom. That shape there. And I want to join those two halves as to one closed vector. And on node editing, I want to take this, pull this out a little bit. Nope, that was stupid. I just made a copy of that. I don't want to change that. I want let's try that one more time join that together and I want to stretch this I'm gonna hold that shift key down and pull it out this way all right let's take these two shapes let's move them inward and in node editing I want to pull this out 
a little bit more to a point to kind of create this decorative element, but I don't want that circle that big. Uh, let's lower that down in size. Bring it a little bit closer to the end there. Good. And I want to mirror that to the other side. Hopefully it fits. Otherwise I'll make bakery a little smaller. Let's see if it fits. No. Oh. All right, let's make my board a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go 30, 24, 25, 26. I'm gonna go 26 inches. All right. Ah, hold on. When I select this, I don't want these two items selected. I want to move this over to the left till I'm happy with it. And then I'm going to select all of it and center it on the board. Okay, so that's going to be my little decorative design. Now, I want Bakery to have a bit of an offset, kind of a, a outline around it, if you will. And uh, I'd like to give it uh, some uh, almost like a Hollywood light effect, if you will. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. This is all manual. There's not like a, there's not like a, um, there's not like a, a button that I could click to make everything pop in place where I want. Um, wish there was, but let me see if I go into my text box here. Uh, four inch tall text. Let me see something. Um, What I'm doing is I'm using a single line font just to see if I can Okay. All right. No, that was a stupid idea. It's going to be better for me. That was dumb. Don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that at all. It's going to be better for me to do it as an offset. So I'm going to take the word bakery. I'm going to offset it um, inward. And I basically, I kind of need to really, let me measure first, just to get a general idea of how, what, what kind of spacing is on my letters. Uh, they're going to vary uh, for sure, but let me, let me see if I measure from here to here, I'm about 0 0.92, 0 0.83, 0 0.92. 0.8, uh, that one I missed my mark altogether. Hold on a second. 0.9242. So 9242 seems to be a consistent number. I don't need to go any further than that. So I'm going to take my text. I'm going to offset it inward. 0.9242 divided by 2 equals 0.4621. I'm going to offset that and then 
That was a bit much. Oh man, what I'm trying, I want a center line is what I want. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this long way around. Here we go guys, this is all designing where it's all about. So, here we go. All right, I'm gonna have to do this the hard way. Not the hard way, but um, I am going to pick a line, any line. That's good. I only want certain parts of the letters, not all of them. That's good. And it's allowing me to snap, it's allowing me to snap um, that's good. Now I'll show you how I'll center these up in just a second. Let me get the lines in there first. And um, All right, take my scissors and trim that and that away. Okay, so I want that. Now, I'm gonna use a line, and when I draw a line from one point to another, that line has a, um, it has a center point automatically. So, let me, Draw one there, one there, one there, I'm kind of good with the A, but that's all right. We'll put one there, and on the B, Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. If I select this line first, and then this line last, I can align left to right to that last item. So it'll align it to the center of that line, okay? So this line, because it has a center point, it'll align to the center of that. So that'll get me centered there. Then I can delete that line, I don't need it. Same thing here, uh, if I select this line first and this line last, I can align and that because of the angle it's aligning from here to here to the center which is right there and I don't want that so I got to eyeball that one that's fine the angles fine straight up and down is not a problem I can do that no problem that one's good this Hold that shift key, select this, align left to right. That's good. <clears throat> this, that, there we go. And as far as the Y is concerned, I'm just gonna leave it as it is, okay? Now, um, <clears throat> All right, let's get rid of this. Yeah, this will make sense of what I'm doing here in just a moment. I promise you it will. Um, now I want to take the word bakery and I want to offset it. I actually want to offset it now. Uh, I want to offset it outward. 
And I only want to go a small amount, maybe an eighth of an inch. Yeah. Yeah, I think an eighth will look good. All right, now, what are these lines for, Lainey? Why, why, why do we have them in there? What are they doing? What's their purpose? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, I am going to utilize these lines and utilize the tool to where the tool will copy one vector along another. And I'm going to take a little circle. Let me see how big I want my circle. Point, let's go three eighths, point three seven five. That's a good size circle. Let me see what that would look like there. Okay, yeah, that'll be good. All right, now on here, I'm going to select this circle and um, I'm going to, on my line, <clears throat> I'm going to shorten it up just a little bit, about like that. And I'm going to go into the copy vector along, copy along vector tool, sorry. And I want to select the circle first and this line last. And I want to do uh, distance between copies. I think I'm going to go a half inch because these are big letters you got to remember that half inch and force even spacing and hit copy and uh, let's go let's go more than that let's go let's go three quarter I only I don't want like uh, let's go three quarters see if that's too much Five eighths. Meet it in the middle. Okay. I'm going to stick, we'll go five eighths. Uh, then we get rid of the original one. Delete that. It doesn't need to be there. We'll leave that line there for a minute. All right. Same thing with this one. Uh, but I need to make my line a little bit shorter. I'm going to hold that shift key. Bring that line in a little bit shorter because the circles are three eighths of an inch and, and one of them is going to land right on the center of the tip of the line. Always remember that when you're using that copy line, that it's going to start with the center of that circle on the end of the line and end with it on the end of the line. So make your lines appropriate. So uh, I'm going to bring this in just a bit. All right, select this, hold down the shift key, select that and copy. Good, get rid of the original one. Okay, uh, make this line shorter, hold that shift key down. I could almost use the same line of the, like the B, you know, so they're the same height and stuff, but it's all organic, right? We want it to uh, have its own flow. It doesn't have to be so precise every single time, you know? Um, copy that. Get rid of the original. Oops. Okay, over here, same thing. Now, select that, the line, and copy that. Get rid of the original. Same thing here. And 
last but not least now on this one when I change uh, this it's going to change this angle and I don't want to change that angle so I'm going to go into node editing on this one and I'm actually going to pull the node up and I'm going to pull the node down okay uh, that way it doesn't change that angle in the middle all right one more time circle this line and Copy that, get rid of the original. Okay, all right, now, and that's gonna be enough for me. All right, let's create some, uh, I'm gonna create this two ways. Uh, one is gonna be just a V-carve way and then the other is gonna be a raised text, right, okay? So we'll go, we'll go two ways. So that being said, me saying that, let's go ahead and get a border in here. So I wanna take all of this, I wanna size it, hold that shift key down, I wanna size it down evenly, evenly in here because I wanna be able to put a border in here. Um, I wanna be able to put a border in here. So let's see, if I go with a Three quarter inch border. That's good. Um, let's give it some corner radius. Uh, let's go more than that. There we go. All right. So we took some flourish elements we took some flourish elements uh that you know you can just flourish vectors online uh we traced them we borrowed two of those uh we took some leaves right just some leaf vectors traced those up borrowed one of those uh for a little leaf design here uh we have the word bakery offset uh, outward by um What I do, an eighth of an inch on that, I think. Uh, yeah. We have some circles that we copied along the vectors uh, on certain parts of this text, kind of give it that Hollywood light look, you know, like, you know, light and signs. We'll see how that looks in just a minute. And then we took a rectangle and we kind of uh, did some note editing and created this shape here. And then finally ended up with a border to finish off our sign. Okay. And, um, yeah, Harvey, uh, Harvey is talking about in the uh, boxes, guys. Uh, Harvey uh, uh, Matches uh, is talking about the boxes. We can use all kinds of different variables. Uh, we can use the apostrophe for feet. We can use M for metric, I for imperial, P for pi, uh, and we can use the letter H or Y for our height, X or W for our width, T or Z for our um, our thickness in these calculation boxes. And when it comes to the uh, fraction, fraction and decimal conversion and stuff, if I don't know a particular fraction, I can type that in. Let me get out of the size box. Let's go back into the rectangle tool. If I don't know a particular fraction, uh, I can type in the fraction itself and hit the equal sign to do the conversion. Uh, if I'm working in Imperial and I have a metric number, I can take that 300 millimeters and multiply it by the letter I for Imperial to convert that to Imperial numbers, that metric number to Imperial numbers, uh, that kind of thing. Or I can multiply it by M to convert Imperial to metric. Uh, so thanks, uh, Harvey. Appreciate that. Uh, and I just want to kind of give people, let them know what you were referring to. Okay. Cool beans. So, um, and what he was referring to is when I was creating my radius here, uh, if I don't know the particular fraction, I could just type, or the decimal, I could type in the fraction and hit the equal sign on any of those calculation edit boxes, and it'll do the fraction to decimal conversion for you. Cool beans. All right, let's do a regular basic V carve on this. And the first 
carve. Um, the first carve, I want to take my offset here. My offset. This, 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 the outside and the inside of my A, the outside of my K, uh, the inside and the outside of my R, and the outside of the Y. I want to group those together so I don't ever have to do that again. So G for group. Um, I want to offset them one more time. And this time when I offset them outward, I'm going to go a... I'm going to go a sixteenth of an inch. There we go. All righty. Now, let's go ahead and just do a basic V carve on just the items in the middle here. And let's see what we get with all these offsets and stuff, how it's going to look. I have no idea how it's going to look until I actually create the toolpath. So let's zoom in here. Got it all selected. Uh, I am not going to do a flat depth, no flat depth, no flat area clearance tool. Carve, skip, carve. I'm going to go with a 90 degree V bit and let's calculate that. Okay, I'm getting a warning that I have six open vectors. That's because of my straight lines. Let's get rid of those lines. Remember I said keep them? I'm going to put them on another layer. Actually, I'm sorry, I'll just leave them where they are, but I will select them. They're not part of the carve. I'm going to group them together. So that way when I do select uh, the design here, I can hold my shift key down and just select that group and turn it off. Okay, because it's not part of the design. It's not part, it's part of the layout, but it's not part of the tool pass. All right, let's go ahead and calculate this. Let's see what we get. All right. I don't know if this is going to be ugly, pretty, or what, but we're going to find out. Preview the visible tool path. Okay. So... The, not bad. Let's go with a flat depth uh, so we're not going so deep on the letters. Let's go, let's pull in a flat depth on that. So I will go with an eighth inch flat depth. I will use an eighth inch clearance tool. And let's recalculate that. All right, let's reset that preview and preview that toolpath again. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's go kind of maroon so you can see. And basically, it just kind of I don't know if those circles or anything. You know, we're trying to get that kind of that Hollywood. Uh, mirror light, uh, you know, uh, Vegas lights kind of style going on there and all. Um, that looks like something. Let's flip the script on it and see if it looks better the other way. Let's add in the border this time. Let's select everything, add in the border. This time we are going to be carving between here. It's going to skip here carve here, skip here, and carve the circles in. So let's give that a look. Uh, V-carve toolpath, same tools and flat depth. I am going to switch it up. I don't like a 90 in this instance. I'm going to use a 60 for myself. So go 60 and calculate. Just narrower angles on the letters and everything. And um, it uh, it's going to do... It's going to look much better for me aesthetically. So we'll calculate that. This time I want the word, the main big part of the letters bakery to be standing up. 
uncarved and I want the everything carved down. So let's create that carving. Okay. And uh, we've got that basically we kind of we got that little outline going around the letters and stuff. It's kind of that outline. Let's go ahead and turn off the circles in this instance. They're neat for a novelty, but let's see what we can do, what it looks like without them. And then we're going to change it up and do something I haven't done in a long time. I'll show you that in just a second. We're going to calculate that. Reset that preview and preview that visible toolpath. All right, and so, and there's the sign without the, uh, without the little circles in it, little holes. And those, again, just to give you an idea of a reference, right, of a reference, um, the, uh, let's see here, uh, Vegas sign. Mega sign, um, Vegas lights sign. What I was looking at was kind of almost something uh, like this, where you have those Vegas lights that look. Um, and uh, it 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 could be okay, but uh, I'm not sure. But uh, we have some elements there. The leaves and everything look good. Our little flourishes and stuff, and uh, we've got those raised elements and stuff. Now, um, I want to. I want to um, try something. I have not used this tool in a long time. I just want it on, I just want it on that. Then take this, 
I forget what my depth was on that already. 0 0.567. Point. Let me turn off the word bakery. All right, 0 0.567, 0 0.567. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I just want to see. Get rid of that red here in just a minute. All right, let's turn off that color. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think a prism look. Um, I don't think, let me see. Yeah, I don't think it would look good. I was thinking that maybe a prism look would might you know the letters and everything might look good but uh no okay that was just an experiment uh the prism cut tool has i mean a lot of signs many signs that you would see on you know public shopping centers or whatever, you know, all those signs and everything, a lot of them have that prism cut at the top of the letters and all. And uh, that's what the prism toolpath is all about. Um, but uh, in this case of that one, it, uh, it didn't look good. Uh, so I'll stick with the regular um, look and that'll be that. All right, guys and girls. So, we are um, going to do one last really quick thing. I'm going to show you how to, we're going to add some text on top of this. Okay. Um, and then we'll uh, see if we can do like a little quick, uh, on this sign, a little quick text on text on the top of it and see what we need to do to make that happen, to make it, to make it work and, uh, and all that. So let's see here. David says, how would you handle a font like U.S. Stars and Stripes? Um, a font, U.S. Stars and Stripes font. <clears throat> So something along this line, uh, David, is that what you're referring to? Something along that line? Like that? I can do that real quick if you want to see it. All right. Here, let's... Uh, um, We'll, we'll finish off with the stars and the stripes. Uh, let's do the uh, text on text on this, and uh, and then we'll do the stars and stripes. All right, 
So a couple of things that I want to uh, clean up and get rid of. I want to go ahead and get rid of the circles. We're not going to use them in this design. So let's get rid of the lines and the circles. Um, I'm going to get rid of those. All right, second thing is I only need one set of lines here. So the offsets I'm going to remove. All right, and then I'm going to put in some additional text uh, made with love. It's going to be a true type font, and let's do that a little bit backwards. Made with love. We're going to go with a monotype Corsiva is good. We're going to size that down. All right, let's get it centered on the board. Let's line it up. There we go. All right, cool beans. Okay, we're going to, um, we're working in layer 11 here and layer, uh, we're gonna get rid of right click and delete all the empty layers, get rid of those. Uh, we are working with layer five and layer 11. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all of this to a new layer, move to a new layer, and I'm going to call it the original. Pay attention. This is going to be how you would normally do every step on text on text. All right, and that's going to be our only active layer uh, for right in a second. Now we're going to create some additional layers. Here we go. So Number one, we're going to create a layer called top text. We're going to create a layer called bottom text. We're going to create a layer called welded text. Let me get my bottom text in there. And then we're going to create a layer called the lower third. Or I'll just, lower third or elements, either one, I'll just call it lower third. That's going to be everything that is outside of the text on text. These two words, made with love and bakery. Anything outside of that is considered, um, is considered the lower third or elements, whatever. And, uh, that's that's that. I want to move that out a little bit. And I want to mirror that to the other side. Okay. All right. So my design's already laid out. Uh, all of my flourishes and everything, I'm going to select all of them. They're going to stay in here. And those are going to get copied because my original stays intact. They're going to get copied to the lower thirds or elements layer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's going to get copied there. Okay. Uh, bottom text is going to get copied to the bottom text layer. Top text is going to get copied to the top text layer. And the boundary is going to get copied to the top text layer. 
and it's going to get copied to the welded text layer. All right, cool. All right, let's turn off everything. All right, let's get focused here on the screen. Everybody can see that big screen there. All right, our original, we're going to shut it off, turn on the top text layer. The top text is clean. I don't need to do anything with it, so I'm going to convert it to curves. Oops, make sure you're on the correct layer when you do that. Make sure that layer is active, that top text layer. So we're going to convert it to curves, and then we're going to group it together. That's done, and we're going to copy it down to the welded text layer. Finished. The boundary here, I'm going to be cutting an eighth of an inch deep for my top text, an eighth of an inch deep for my bottom text for a total of a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to be using a 60 degree V bit. My magic offset number, and you could go back and look at the videos on text on text on how you get that offset number, is going to be 0.0722 for a 60 degree V bit, eighth inch cut depth on the letters. So I'm going to take my border in the top text layer and offset it inward by 0.0722 and uh, delete that original. There we go. All right, so the top text layer is finished. Now I'm gonna turn that off. The bottom text layer, my text, make sure I'm in that layer, is gonna get converted to a curve and grouped together. I'll move it to the welded text layer in just a minute. Not quite there yet. The welded text layer, my top text that I just had uh, put in there on that welded text is going to get offset outward 0.0722. And then it's going to get grouped back together. Done. Now that that's grouped back together, now I can go back to that bottom text layer and copy that down to the welded text layer. There's a video, there's three videos on my channel that talk about this specifically, so you can focus on that. You you know, this we're just doing this in our signs today because why not? Um, all right. In that welded text layer, we're going to take our top and bottom text and weld that together. Okay, done. Now we need to focus on all of our elements. Okay, these elements are going to get, they're going to actually be lower than our top text. They're going to, they're going to be level with our bottom text, an eighth inch tall and everything in their elements and all. So we are going to create some offsets to protect the wood where they are laying from getting milled away when that top text layer is getting milled away. So we're gonna select all of these items here and we're going to offset them outward by an eighth of an inch. Let me see. Don't want to get too close to my letters. All right, let's undo that. Um, make sure that we're in that lower third layer when we do that. All right, let's go. Um, Let's go. Okay, here's what I want to do. I want, I'm going to just take these, I want to bump them up a little bit. I'm just getting them just slightly away from my letter so I can do my tool pass and all. I'm going to bump them up one, two, Bump these down one, two. That's it. 
That's it. Now I turned on all the layers and I had everything selected in the original when I did that so everything was moved together. Okay. Because I do want to offset outward by an eighth of an inch. And I do I do want to offset that outward by another eighth of an inch. Before I do that, I want to group it together. There we go. Then I'm going to offset that outward another eighth of an inch. And I'm going to group that together. Now, this first offset gets copied to the first offset only gets copied to the welded text layer and the top text layer. Beautiful. All right. Let's turn on all of our welded and top text here. Leave original turned off and bottom turned off. Uh, everything should be out, should be turned on. Okay, good. We're gonna get a little nick right there on our border. Um, <clears throat> gonna get a nick right there on our border. Um, okay, border. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Okay. I'm gonna I gotta compromise now. I gotta compromise. I'm gonna offset inward on that border I'm just going to come in a half inch instead of three quarters like I did before that'll just give me a little bit of room there right I don't want to be right up on my jump all right and uh, let's go back to our uh, internal radius corners let's go one inch all right <clears throat> now on the um, I want to copy this to the top text layer. I want to copy it to the welded text layer. And I want to copy it to the original. Put it back in the original. Um, and uh, it doesn't belong there. All right, so if we go back to our top text layer, I need to offset that back inward, get back where I was, that 0 0.0722 on that border, if you remember. Okay, now we're back to where we were uh, we just have, all we did was widen it up a little bit so there's no overlap on our borders. That's all we did. So let's go ahead and create our tool pass and see what we got. V-carve tool path. Zero start depth, 0.125 flat depth, 60 degree V-bit. I'm going to use a combination of a quarter inch and an eighth inch end mill. So I'll throw a quarter inch in there as well. And we're going to select all of the open and close vectors. I'm using the vector selector down here in the toolpath. All open and close vectors. I'm going to associate them with the toolpath and everything for the top text layer. So that way it selects all the vectors on the top text layer. We're going to calculate that toolpath.
We're gonna reset the preview, uh, or not reset the preview, we're gonna preview the visible toolpath. And that is backwards by all means. It does not, that is not correct. So when I associated this toolpath with all of the vectors on the top text layer, the border should have been selected. So that tells me that my inside border here, which should be on the top text, is not there. So I need to move it back to the top text layer. Now I'm going to redo that toolpath, and that border should be selected this time. There we go. So when I offset it inward, I still had the lower third layer active, and so it put it back on that layer and took it out of the top text layer. All right, so we have our quarter inch end mill that's gonna do a majority of the work, uh, doing uh, all the clearing. <clears throat> it's going to then, uh, the eighth inch is gonna clear up, then the V-bit's gonna come in and follow. So this is what we're looking like so far, okay? Now the next tool path is going to start at an eighth of an inch and cut down an eighth of an inch with the same bits and this time with the vector selector, it's going to be all open and closed vectors associated with this tool path for everything on the welded text layer. So if we go to the 2D view, you'll see all the welded text layer vectors are now selected and we can calculate that tool path. Beans, preview the visible toolpath. That quarter inch end mill is going to go in and clear out all of that stuff. Followed by the eighth, followed by the V bit. Okay, that's what we're looking like so far with our text on text. Now we need to focus on the elements. So the first element, uh, we're gonna go into that lower thirds. Um, let's turn off the other layers for a minute so we can just focus on this lower third here. We are going to do a pocket toolpath. Pocket toolpath is gonna cut from zero down to an eighth of an inch. It's gonna use a quarter inch end mill or an eighth inch end mill is fine. It doesn't matter whichever one you wanna do. I'm gonna go with a quarter and it's going to be on the outside offset, the outside offset. We're gonna calculate that tool path. And I see one, I'm gonna stop that calculation for a minute because I see one vector that should not be selected. So I am going to ungroup, hit the letter U to ungroup these vectors for a minute and I want to turn off this little loop right there and there's one right here too I want to turn that off I only want the outside boundary to be selected so let me group that back together group and let's do that one more time calculate All right, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna mill the top of those elements down an eighth of an inch. So let's preview that cut. Okay, it's gonna bring them down to that eighth inch level. Now we're gonna do the final detail, which is a V-carve toolpath. Gonna start at an eighth, cut down an eighth with the, uh, we, can, we don't need the quarter inch end mill for this. We're gonna take it out of the loop. We just need the eighth inch end mill and our V bit. And we're going to uh, make sure that our outside vector is still selected, that outside offset. But now we actually need our elements selected, okay? Our elements need to be selected. just the elements, not the offsets. Make sure we're grabbing just the elements and 
not the offsets. That comes around and this is my first one. There we go. All right, all the leaves. One more right here and here. Okay, V carve toolpath. Calculate. All right, let's zoom in and preview the visible toolpath. Okay, these little marks around, these little marks around here are, um, they are because my eighth inch bit won't fit in there. So I need to offset my little outside boundary only a little bit further, just a little bit further. It wasn't offset quite enough uh, so that instead of offsetting, when I offset it early in the design at 0.125, I should have went 0.15 would have been good. So what I want to do is I need to take my outside boundary, that outside boundary, and I just need to go a little bit further offset. Uh, so I'm just going to offset outward um, another 0 0.03, another 0.125, 0 0.15, 1, 2, 5, 1, 5. 0 0.03, yeah, another 30,000, I'm going to go a 30 second, 03, 1, 2, 5. so 0 0.03125, and I want to, I'm going to delete the original and just offset that outward, there we go. And go back and select my elements again. Let's go back into that toolpath. Uh, and all I have to do is select a new offset. That boundary, that boundary, that boundary, that one, that one, and that one. Let's calculate that toolpath once again. And oh, hold on a second. Um, Let me turn this off. I don't want that in the mix. No, that's supposed to be selected, you goofball. Never mind, that's supposed to be selected. All right. Yeah, sorry. I, I was seeing things. Let's calculate that. All right, and if we preview that visible toolpath, it should clean that up. There we go. Beautiful. So there is our text on text sign. Bakery made with love. And we just didn't go out quite far enough on that outside boundary, on that second outside offset. 0.15 would have done it. And, uh, but there's our sign. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, that is that. Okay. Someone had asked about how I would handle the stars and stripes font. Uh, let's just basically, I'm just going to do USA like you saw um, in that picture that we pulled up when the, when the gentleman asked. Let's see who asked about that. Do, 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 David. So, uh, I'm going to go with this text here and let's go U S A. Let's go four inches, five inches tall. Okay, let's put that on its own layer so we can turn everything else off. Uh, let's move to a new layer. And. Okay, 
let's go big or go home there we go all right so first things first is i'm going to create the stripes uh let's let's first divide i want i want kind of half and half right so i'm going to take a line and i'm going to just draw a straight line across here 90 degrees or zero degrees make sure when you do that you're on the right layer so layer six should be active let's try that one more time okay the sole purpose of this line is just to um just to divide my just just to be a visual for the dividing my text in half okay um and from there, I'm going to draw a rectangle. Square corners. Okay. And I'm going to take that rectangle and I'm going to um, create two more. I'm going to hold down the control key and drag down one two uh let's go let's go three more okay now i'm gonna show you how to space this i'm gonna draw a line from my middle line my dividing line i'm gonna draw a line straight down to the bottom of the s okay so i want to get straight down let me get my 90 degree mark A line. Hold on a minute. Let's try that again. From here, straight down. I wonder why my. Uh... Yeah, that was weird. My snapping wasn't working. Anyway. Um, very important that this line goes straight to the bottom of the S right there. Okay. Now we're going to take these four rectangles. We're going to select them first. We're going to select the line last. Hold the shift key down and that vertical line is going to get selected last. Okay. We are going to go into the alignment tool and we're going to align them, okay, uh, at the center basically of that line. So they're all going to be stacked on top of each other. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to space them evenly on that last vector vertically, the vertical button. And that's going to create the equal distance spacing. Okay. All right. That'll create the equal distance spacing. Get rid of that line. We don't need it. That's going to create the spacing for our stripes. Okay. All right. Now that we've done that, you have to, if we, once again, um, to uh, give you the uh, reference, okay coming back in here you see how every you know like every other section is deleted right it's gone that's the stripes you know you're creating that that kind of that stripe element right and then our stars are going to be in the upper part so basically i'm leaving my line alone there uh we are going to be uh between these stripes we're going to be removing that material Okay, between the stripes, we're going to be removing that material and the way that we're going to uh, do that is we're going to what's going to be the best way for me to do that. I am going to. We will keep this, delete that, keep this, delete that, keep this, delete that. I'm 
just going to trim. Just trim. Uh, the best way to do it is just to trim it. Uh, so the stripes don't go past the letters, right? So first things first, USA uh, gets converted to curves. Okay, it's got to be vectors. You guys with me? All right, and we're going to take our scissors and we're going to work it. So this is going to go away out here. Might as well do it out here too. Uh, in between here. Get rid of, I'm just basically, all I'm doing is getting rid of my waist, right? So all the stuff outside of the letters. Getting rid of all the stuff outside of the letters. It's all my waist. Okay. It's all my waist. All right. So now we go in and just remove the uh, letters except for the stripe. So this and this, that and that side, this. Trim, trim, trim. Uh, this, that. This, that. That, that. Okay, there's the stripes for the A. Uh, make sure you trim the same rows, same stripes. It's the narrow ones. Oh, undo that. Undo that. Okay, there's the S. Best way is just to trim. Okay, so there is the uh, US, the USA on uh, the stripes. Okay, now we got to focus on the stars. Okay, so anytime we draw a star for the military, uh, it is a five-pointed star and it has a 38.2 inner radius. Um, anything constitutional, any kind of constitutional star is a 38.2 internal radius 38.2 okay all right and we will basically kind of size that up and as far as what size the stars are going to be that's you know you just whatever looks good right and just like we uh did before remember now this line right here that's going to get trimmed too in just a minute okay that was my dividing line as a matter of fact let's go ahead and do that now uh, we're going to trim that, 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 and that away, right? Okay. That's what that dividing line did for us. Okay, it ended up closing off those vectors on the top. All right, we're going to take, and we need to draw some guidelines. So we're going to take a guideline straight down here, just like we did before with those circles, right? But this time we're using stars. So uh, let's click there. Um, here, we'll center them up in just a second. It's very important. Now this one, we want to try our best to get it as centered as possible. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize my vector. I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to cut the vector here. And I'm going to cut the vector on this side. And I'll put it back together in a minute. I'll end up joining that back. But I'm using it to help me with my offset. And I'm going to then, I'm going to take a measurement. Just to kind of get a general idea of how wide my shit is, right? You know, um, I could almost measure this length right here and that'll tell me. So I, let's do that. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. We'll use the regular measure tool here. And we're going to measure a span. We're going to measure that span right there. And it is 1.5692. 1.5692. So I'm going to take this offset, offset it inward 
1.5692 divided by 2 equals and offset. Oh, I went the wrong direction. We got to go outward. And that's going to give me a center line. Okay. It's going to give me a center line based on that shape. Now, that line could probably be much better here. It, that is the center line, but this is where I'm going to take artistic creativity and I'm actually going to, uh, I think I can draw a better line where it's not so, it looks flat right here and it doesn't look quite centered and I got all of those nodes to deal with now, right? So I'm going to take and draw a curve. I'm going to start here. I'm going to come here, 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 and end there. Space bar to finish. And now I can work my curve with much less nodes and stuff. I can work my curve to give myself the shape that I want. Okay. And I don't want to do that. Control Z. I want to grab that node and Pull this down a little bit. Pull this in a little bit. And I'm actually good with that. Uh, and then last but not least, I'm going to take my A, snap to the center here, and snap to the center there. Okay. So now these lines that I'm drawing, they are my pass. They're my pass for my stars to follow or to be, you know, uh, spaced or centered on and stuff. Now, one thing that you will note if we go back and look at this, all right, um, try your best to uh, see the letters over here and the stars, it's small, I can't really zoom in, but the stars stay vertical, okay? They don't lean, they don't do it, they stay vertical. It's important, super important. Okay, so now what I might decide is what size my star is gonna be, okay? And I might decide where I wanna place my stars, okay? I could use the follow along vector tool, but remember what, I, what happens there, one's gonna get put on the end of the line and one's gonna be put on the other right? What I would rather do is I would like to say, okay, let's look, and I'm going to kind of use the sample here as my sample. There are three stars on the U. There are one, two, three, four, five, six on the S, one, two, three, four, five on the A. Three, three, six, and six, okay? So, one, two, three... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this star and I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to drag it down one, two, three times. And while I have those three, I'm going to hold down the control key and drag a copy over here as well. I am going to select those three stars. I am going to select that line last. I am going to go into my alignment tool. Hold that shift key when you select that line last. I'm going to go into my alignment tool and I'm going to align them to the center of that line and then I am going to space them equal distance vertically. I'm going to do the same thing with these three stars. I'm going to select those first. I'm going to select the line last. I want to center them on that line and then space vertically. Okay, I'm using that line as my reference. I don't need that line anymore. I can now delete that out of my, there's my U. Okay. Now, for the S here, for here, um, I am, I want to kind of, I'd like to kind of try to keep similar spacing, right? It's not always possible, but I'd like to try to keep similar spacing. So what I'm going to do is on this one, I'm going to borrow one of these stars, hold down that control key and drag it over here. Okay. And um, if I were to measure vertically from the center 
of this star to the center of this star, my spacing is about one inch, 1.0058, okay? So roughly about one inch. Um, and I could, first thing I'm gonna try is I will try this tool here. I will select this, I will select this line. I will go distance of one inch apart, force the spacing, and I am not going to align the objects to the curve. I want them to stay vertical, okay? Uh, and see what I get. I can delete that original. I am going to delete the one here on the end here. I'm gonna delete the one on the end here. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My text might be a little bit bigger than theirs. Uh, but what I think that I'm gonna do is, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase the spacing. So I'm gonna undo this. I'm gonna increase the spacing to one and a quarter. One, two, three, four, no, nope. undo that. One and an eighth. One, two, three, four, five, that's good. I'm gonna settle for five on that one. So I'm gonna delete this this, that, and that, that'll be my S, happy with that. On the A, let's borrow one of these. Control key to drag a copy off. Now on this one, it's gonna be three and three. Uh, so, and they stay vertical. So I am, uh, I'll just take a look and see what we look like if I use this tool again. Otherwise, I'm just gonna put my three in there and line them up and space them equal distance. I'll show you how, just like we did with the U. But let me see what we get here. Uh, one, two, Okay, I'm gonna actually take my shape, not the star, take this shape, I'm gonna bring it down to, here I'll tell you exactly where I'm gonna bring it to. I'll be happy with that. All right, I'm gonna to have to go into node editing on this one. I need to pull this line. Or was that straight up? That was straight up. Never mind. I'll leave it just right where it is. That's straight up. Um, yeah. All right, let's take a look here. That, that. Oh, so close. But, I am happy with that. I'm gonna reduce the spacing to one and a 16th. One and a 16th, and I'm gonna reduce my line height about to there. Let's get rid of those stars. This will be the last one. There's probably an easier way to do this, but why not? Let's do it this way. There we go. All right, let's get rid of that. And that is how I would handle the stars and stripe font if I was trying to create it. Okay. All right. 
So that would be that. All right. Well, it's 948. Uh, hopefully you got something out of those uh, lessons and everything. If the S is throwing you off and you want another star in there somewhere, and you just want one more star and you can reduce the spacing so you can get one more in there, that's fine. No big deal. Uh, but uh, I'm happy with that the way it is. And uh, hopefully, David, hopefully that answered your question. Because that's how I would address the Stars and Stripe font. Okay. Cool beans. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Hopefully you got something out of this lesson. And uh, until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.